picture the disciples gathered together in obedience to Jesus' instruction, waiting in expectation and anticipation. They are in the upper room, a space filled with the lingering presence of their departed Lord Jesus Christ. The atmosphere is charged with a sense of unity and purpose as they pray fervently, hearts knit together in anticipation of the promised gift. Suddenly, without warning, a sound like a mighty rushing wind fills the room. It's not a gentle breeze, but a powerful, forceful gust that seems to emanate from the very heavens. The disciples feel the wind sweep through the room, stirring their senses and electrifying the air with a sense of divine presence. As they turn their gaze upward, their eyes widen in amazement as they witness a miraculous sight. Above each person's head, there appears what can only be described as tongues of fire. These flames dance and flicker with a supernatural intensity, casting a warm and radiant glow upon each individual. But this fire is unlike any earthly flame. It does not consume or destroy, but purifies and empowers. It descends upon each disciple, enveloping them in its ethereal embrace. And as the flames settle upon them, they feel a transformation taking place within their very beings. Then, as if orchestrated by some divine conductor, a miraculous phenomenon occurs. The disciples, filled with the Holy Spirit, begin to speak in languages they had never heard. Words of praise and adoration spill forth from their lips in a torrent of heavenly tongues, each syllable infused with the power and presence of the Spirit. The room reverberates with the sound of their voices, a symphony of languages harmonizing in a cacophony of praise. Some speak in the native tongues of those gathered outside while others utter words unknown even to themselves, yet miraculously each person understands in their own language the message being proclaimed. Outside, a crowd begins to gather, drawn by the commotion and a strange phenomenon occurring within the upper room. They listen in astonishment as they hear the disciples speaking in their own languages, declaring the wonders of God. And thus... On that momentous day of Pentecost, the church is born in a blaze of divine glory. The disciples, emboldened and empowered by the Holy Spirit, step out into the streets to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to all who would listen. And from that day forward, the world would never be the same. My friends, on this sacred day of Pentecost, we stand at the threshold of a profound spiritual reality. Today, we commemorate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the disciples, an event that forever altered the course of human history and birthed the Church. In exploring Acts chapter 1, verses 15 to 17 and 21 to 26, and we look also at John 17, 6 to 19, we uncover not only the historical narrative of Pentecost, but also the timeless truths and transformative power it holds for us today. Let us look firstly at the anticipation of unity and purpose. In Acts 1, we witness the disciples gathered in the upper room awaiting the fulfillment of Jesus' promise, the coming of the Holy Spirit. This period of waiting was not passive, but marked by fervent prayer and unity of purpose. Even in the absence of Jesus physically, they were bound together by their shared mission to proclaim the gospel to the ends of the earth. And so imagine with me a mighty river flowing from a single source, 
branching out into tributaries that nourish and sustain diverse ecosystems. Now, as you think about that, similarly, the early church was rooted in the unity of the Spirit, and it branched out into various communities, each uniquely equipped to fulfill God's purposes. This unity wasn't mere uniformity, but a beautiful tapestry of diversity bound together by a common faith and a common mission. The replacement of Judas Iscariot with Matthias exemplifies the importance of discernment and leadership within the community of believers. Rather than acting hastily, the disciples sought God's guidance through prayer and scripture, affirming the principle of communal decision-making and submission to God's will. Secondly, we see that from Pentecost, the disciples were empowered for mission. Jesus' parting words to his disciples in Acts 1 verse 8 serves as a prelude to the events of Pentecost. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The Holy Spirit wasn't merely a comforting presence, but also a dynamic force empowering believers for the mission of spreading the gospel. Consider a dormant seed bursting forth from the soil, breaking through the darkness of the ground to reach towards the light. Similarly, the Holy Spirit ignites within us a passion for evangelism, a passion enabling us to boldly proclaim the message of salvation to a world in need. It's the Holy Spirit's power that transforms timid disciples into fearless witnesses for Christ. And thirdly, we can see the Holy Spirit bringing divine union and guidance to the disciples. In John 17, often referred to as the high priestly prayer of Jesus, we glimpse into the intimate communion between Jesus and the Father. And Jesus prays not only for his immediate disciples, but for all believers throughout history, including us today. His prayer encompasses themes of protection, sanctification, and unity, anticipating the challenges his followers would face in the world. Right now I'm thinking of the words of the 23rd Psalm and envision a shepherd guiding his flock through treacherous terrain, leading them to green pastures and still waters. Now, in much the same way, Jesus, through his prayer, provides us with divine guidance and protection amidst life's trials and temptations. The Holy Spirit serves as our internal compass, leading us into truth and righteousness. And so, my friend, as we stand on the precipice of Pentecost, let us not merely commemorate a historical event, but embrace the spiritual reality it represents. The same Spirit that empowered the early church is available to us today empowering us for mission, guiding us into truth, and uniting us in purpose. May we, like the disciples, eagerly await the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our lives, equipping us to be bold witnesses for Christ in our communities and beyond. God bless you. Amen.